Hello and welcome to episode 135 of the weekly recap. We are dealing with internet issues. We are dealing with travel. We are dealing with sickness. But my partner in crime, Maddie, has persevered. How are you doing today, Maddie? Hello, Rick. I'm doing well, much better than the previous days. So, yeah, ready to pack and go to Latin America for the Vimon tours in Buenos Aires and Sao Paulo. And how about you? I can see you are in a kitchen today. That's a that's a first. Yes, I do believe this is the first time I've done the recap in a kitchen. So something must, much less exotic than last week uh, when we were in Mexico City and Bogota. But this week I'm in the U.S. states of Missouri, Oklahoma, and, and a meeting with a whole bunch of our partners. We're doing this nice uh, loop through there. So uh, very different uh, week than last week, but uh, love this. This is good stuff. And uh, so hopefully everyone can hear and see this okay. It looks okay on our end, but now this is two weeks in a row that we're both trying our hot spots and, and internet. Oh boy, it's craziness. But speaking of crazy, we've got some legit stuff that we're going to bring up in the community. So let's start first with my, uh, Microsoft 365 related topic from Nico. And Nico is, you know, playing off some of those news announcements and stuff, and he's got a lot going on here, but what caught your eye, Maddie? So yeah, this is actually a great post from Nico. I know we already discussed about this topic a couple of months ago when actually this uh, was official announcement by uh, by Microsoft and then I know you wrote uh, a blog as well about that so that was kind of discussed but I really thought it would be good to revisit it as Nico um, put together all this information very nicely in, in the community um, and he brought some um, pros and cons Microsoft service uh, Microsoft uh, service versus the proven existing Vim solution. So personally, at this point, I don't look at it as one service against the other, but I I don't say this might not change in the future. I don't know. But for the time being, I see it more like a valuable addition that could potentially create new opportunities. Um, even Nico mentions that at first I see the archive solution as a nice add on and I have to agree on that. Uh, that's of course to be seen. And there is also if we go to um, to the R&D forums, I think one of uh, the members suggested uh, a post that uh, there is a discussion and Mike Ressler put it very nicely in there. He explains uh, very well how this impacts Beam. Uh, at least on the short term, but I saw you jumped as well in the conversation at the hub. Nico kind of um, tagged you in there and uh, you put together some uh, some valuable points. Um, would you like to add anything else on that? We can I cannot hear you, Rick. Yeah, that's not the technology. That was me. Sorry. Oh, okay. I have a I have a mute button on here, and when I'm not talking, I try to mute, but I forgot to do it. So thank you for that. Not the technology, but no. yeah, Nico does the right job here. He's asking all the right questions at all the right times here, and I'll zoom into one thing that I think is really important here, and it's the new APIs, because the current APIs that we've been using weren't really meant for massive egress and ingress, you know, uh, of a backup function. They're, they're meant for the content consumption and things like that. So I'm really excited for that. They don't exist yet, or at least they've not been made public to backup vendors like Veeam, as far as I know, yet. But that's going to be a big thing, right? Uh, the only other thing that I think is really an interesting thing, Nico made a comment. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Nico, he was a little harsh. I'm just going to say it that way, Nico. This is, I think, uh, a little bit of a harsh comment. And I, I kind of disagreed with you a little bit on that, Nico, because there have been some examples and I wanted to point out like SQL Server, for example, is a good example where, you know, native backups do really well. So I think that it's important to note that yes, but, and the other point of view that I have 
is that everything we back up, everything, Windows, VMware, uh, the cloud, everything, we've always had this notion of there's a built-in backup from the provider. It's always been the case, and it really drives innovation. It pushes us to make more capabilities, deliver faster and stuff like that. I actually do, like you said, like this post from Mike Ressler here. Um, and, and, and Mike is uh, being cagey like Mike does right here, but he is he is acknowledging this is going to improve our products. So those APIs, and, and he I guess he's not as cagey because he gets to it right here. But this is really important because there's a lot that isn't finalized, but what is really clear is that this is going to make our product improve from backup and recovery. And then, um, and then Polina, she also is important on this view here. She manages the product with Mike. You know, there are going to be there are going to be two very different products, right? So I think it's also back to the uh, other point of view, and I think that Polina is in it right here. Flexible and granular recovery options. That's another one. So we got to see how this is going to go. But in the end, this is going to make Veeam backup from Microsoft 365 better. So I really talked a lot about that. But <laughs> uh, hey, thank you so much, Nico. We are going to watch this space for sure. So congratulations on that, Nico. And next up, uh, relatively new Vanguard, Zane talking about near zero replication with the video for Veeam repositories. And I think this is a pretty cool topic. Yeah, so first of all, yeah, great that we are having you at the hub and you are contributing in here, Zane. Uh, congratulations as well on the VUG USA leader position now. So we are looking forward to um, see more on the VUG USA space as well. But talking about this article, which is actually in demo, which is actually pretty good. Um, he's, so he's showing how to easily modernize uh, your backup and DR with Pure and Beam. So basically using Pure Storage Platform to provide rapid recovery and near zero replication for Beam repositories. He's showing us how Active DR, which is an included feature on all pure flash ar arrays, can help obtain that. And he's saying that the feature is e really easy to set up and once complete requires no further management to keep your data replicated at a ne near zero RPO. Um, and it also provides quick and easy failover to pre configured hosts and the ability to test failover without stopping site to site replication. Now, probably if you go and watch the YouTube video he uh, put together, there's going to be everything in detail step by step. Um, this is just like a small resume of it. And I like the fact that he, he didn't just share, you know, the YouTube video. He actually went through some important um, things and he explained the whole process and posted in there. But what do you think on that, Rick? Well, my first thing that I love is totally unrelated. I love that he's working with the Veeam Disaster Recovery Orchestrator product. But I love that he's walking through this scenario from not just the pure storage perspective, but also the Veeam backup and replication perspective. So uh, for everyone watching, Zane now works at Pure, but he used to work at Veeam and he still dabbles a lot with it. So. I love when people put the two solutions together and do these incredible things. So I think this is really cool. And it's really ironic, Maddie, because just yesterday I met with one of our reseller partners. And I think we talked for about 30 minutes straight about all of the good opportunities with Pure Storage and Veeam. So uh, very well put here, Zane. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, great post. Thank you, Zane. Now we're going to go over to Kubernetes Corner. We're calling a new name, Natish Kumar. Um, this is pretty cool talking about Kubernetes releases. This is like under the hood stuff. This is pretty cool. Yeah, so first of all, welcome Nitish to the Vim community and welcome to the Kubernetes Corner. Thank you for this contribution. Really liked it. It's something that, you know, like this post is 
unlike other posts that we we usually share in the recap, but uh, it's really great for a change. And uh, he apparently he was assigned in the Kubernetes community to write a spotlight blog on the SIG release, a blog about the struggles and um, of the leads and shares of the SIG release. And for the one for, for the ones that don't know about SIG, what SIG is, apparently is one of the special interest groups within the Kubernetes project. Uh, focused on writing, updating, and maintaining the documentation for Kubernetes as a whole. And he's discussing two interesting questions with, as well as um, the answers to these questions or like a sample from the answers he got. And the pro two, one of the question is the process for a new version of Kubernetes and its specific technologies and methods, as well as how could a new contributor uh, be effectively contributing to the SIG release. And here you got a bunch of points about the process, tips and tricks, but what is extremely amazing for me to see is how much of um, this process is actually influenced by the Kubernetes community, you know? So it's like, if you see, it's like they are choosing volunteers from the Kubernetes community and they, um, you know, like they are discussing different points with with uh, them. So yeah, Nitish, please do share that blog with us once it's ready. I think that would be a very interesting um, share and it would be interesting to talk more about it. Really liked it. This is awesome. I mean, this is how one very significant part of the technology ecosystem, this is a view of how it's moving. I mean, especially things like these caps here, these enhancement proposals, that's pretty cool. Um, just getting a view of that. And Natish, big, big welcome here to Kubernetes Corner. Um, you know, hopefully you find that your time here is welcome and we'd love to, to have this point of view um, on what goes on with some of these releases and just sharing the information. I think you bring up a really good point, Maddie, that you know, there's a lot of input from the community on how these new releases of Kubernetes are made. And just by the nature of that, I think it should be shared. And everyone in the Kubernetes groups are welcome to share here. So this is great. This is outstanding. So big welcome and thank you for sharing, Nitish. Thank you very much. Looking forward to see more from you, Nitish. All right. Blog of the month winner. All right. I know who it was, even though I forgot to vote. I'm sorry, Maddie. But big congratulations to Christian Emersole with his deterrent control, which is one that we uh, featured a couple weeks ago, if I remember right. That's correct. Yes. So congratulations, Chris. Well deserved. Uh, I mean, congratulate everyone. But yeah, Chris, um, you got most of the votes from our community. So great. You got your awesome badge as well. There you go. Welcome to the club, Chris. OK, next up is. Uh, a user group in uh, Monaco, uh, south of France area. Looks like Stabs is uh, a co-conspirator of that. Uh, this is going to be really cool. Let's go ahead and uh, check out this registration page. This is pretty attractive, but weren't you supposed to be there, Maddie? I was supposed to be there, Rick, but I'm going to be in Latin America. Um, it was a tough choice as well, you know, because I really wanted to be with the community as well for this great event that they are putting together. As you said, one of the organizers is uh, Stabs, Philippe, who is also a legend, and the other one is Christopher, who is a vanguard. Um, and we want to thank Monaco Digital for hosting this event. They both work for uh, for Monaco Digital. So if you are going to be in Monaco and uh, you want to participate, you still have time to register. The event is going to take place on the 14th of September, uh, which is next Thursday. There's like a great agenda. It's going to be a full day event. Um, you're going to hear about, you know, like some V12A um, discussions and then Kasten discussions. They also have some of our partners that are going to talk about different topics. And yeah, it's, this is going to be great. Just don't miss it out. I'm really looking forward to see a blog post 
um, after that and pictures of the VUG front. So yeah, Philip, I'm looking at you uh, <laughs> when I say that. So yeah, I, I think it, it's such a shame I'm not going to be there, but uh, obviously, you know, sometimes you have to, to make the, the hard choice and uh, decide on one of the events. You, you well, can't be um, everywhere at the same time. Uh, I know I that. I would love to. <laughs> Uh, I lived that life. And then the other thing is, is like, I got to say, this is a solid agenda. This is a all day, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. I love uh, cocktail closure with V-Beer. That's great. Got they got uh, sponsors, Microsoft 365, Nutanix, Exagrid, and then ransomware advice. We've got um, some Dell Technologies, I mean, partners, you got Veeam stuff. This is a solid agenda. And I love, I love, love, love that it's basically run by the users. This is, this is yeah. great. Outstanding. This is amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, we definitely need pic pictures for sure. Yes, for sure. absolutely. So guys, we're going to tag you in this one. Yeah. So cool. Thank you, Stabs. Thank you, Christopher uh, Glenmo. And then uh, check that out. Actually, you know, if I wasn't going anywhere, I'd consider going. That looks amazing. The, <laughs> the last thing I want to bring up is a KB that I want to bring to everyone's attention, uh, KB 4483. This came out, uh, well, it came out, let's see, the 18th of August. It was updated earlier this week. I should say late last week, but the, we noticed a couple of scenarios where incremental backups of Microsoft 365 were really, really long, and it, it ended up being determined that it was specifically isolated to M365 environments hosted in Europe region, but we just want to let you know that if you were having that, that was expected, um, and, and the Reality was it was determined that folders had their ID and modification date fields changed. Okay, those changes were like right here to an internal isolated Microsoft component. But in our view as a backup, it ended up um, making it copy it again. So that type of thing. So it's all good and clear. But, you know, if you had long backups, we just wanted to make sure you had that FYI right here. So that is that and guess what maddie we have who's new and oh there's maddie let's go to who's new big mm -hmm. thank you to sophia i think that when i was promoting veeam community hub last week in latin america i think it made a difference we had oh a lot of people goodness. something also was going on in egypt we had a lot of people come in from egypt but i saw some mexico i saw some colombia registrations but Wow, Sophia, 137. Uh, thank you, Sophia, for making this. We had plus 137. This is great. Amazing. So if we have like uh, people from Egypt, most probably we have to thank Muhammad for that because now we have the BUG Egypt as well. And I know he's been um, asking some of the members of the communities that were on a WhatsApp or LinkedIn group to join the hub. So this could be one of the, reasons why we have a lot of uh, people from Egypt joining the hub. And then, yeah, thank you and thank Julia for um, engaging with people in Mexico and uh, Colombia and uh, inviting them to the hub. So this is amazing. Yeah, there's some really good, funny names in here. Uh, uh, these are good ones, right? It's Josh Smile. Uh, if Josh, if that's your name, that's I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd be the happiest guy in the world if that was my <laughs> name. Um, this is like there's some really good, awesome names in here. I mean, I love just seeing um, what people. <laughs> Marshall Cotton. Uh, I, I love these names. They're, they're awesome. So everyone, big welcome for those who have joined. Really cool stuff. So coolest usernames for the week are. And this is Sophia's pick. I don't even know what it's going to be. Hit the drum. I love it. Hit the drum. Best of Benny. Dark Master M and O Loco. All right. Cool, cool. Oh, well, and that's cool. Yeah. Alfred's pick. Oh, that is for awesome. For anonymous. For anonymous. Wow. This is yeah. a good one. That is. I love that one. I love it. I'll even zoom that's in on that one. That's worth of Alfred's pick for sure. 
But if it's so anonymous, will he even know that he's going to get the badge? Or she? Who knows? So big welcome to everyone. But uh, this is always fun stuff when we do the the who's new. We love that. So uh, awesome stuff. And man, we pulled it off again this week, Maddie, with the uh, technology challenges. Uh, one of the only times we were going to have to edit an episode, but we made it. But uh, thank you so much for preparing all the content. Absolutely, Rick. I guess next week we're going to see everyone. I'm going to be in Buenos Aires and you are going to be in Canada. Canada. So yes. let's hope we are not going to have any technical issues. I guarantee you we will have a technical issue. So yes. we will so see. We will see. see. So yeah, but it's going to be fun anyway. It's going to be just different. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, Maddie, thank you so much. Sophia, thank you for preparing the who's new and everyone. We will see you back week, back next week, hopefully with a no glitch episode of the recap. Have a great week weekend, everyone. Yeah.